All right, guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. I'm at a point on the Cushman here that I need to install or hook up a key switch here um, on the dash, and I need to get a DC to DC voltage regulator into the golf cart. However, I'm not going to install this stock normal key switch on the Cushman here. I'm not going to put this gauge in here. The reason being on the gauge is because sometimes I might run this thing on 72 volts. Sometimes I might pull those batteries out, uh, put some 48 volt lithiums in here since we're running the big battery setups on all of these golf carts. Now with that being said, I don't need this this gauge here, I'm not sure if it'll work with 48 or 72. I'm not sure if it'll work with lithium or just lead like was previously installed with it. So I'm gonna be getting rid of the state of charge meter from EasyGo. And by doing so, I'm also getting rid of this old school key switch. I think it's ugly, I can't stand it. And we're gonna be replacing all of that with an EasyGo RXV style key switch. Well, it's not an RXV style, it's actually an RXV key switch. I'm going to show you guys how to install this key switch into your golf cart and I'll have them put it in my golf cart and mount it and all of that. So bear with us. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is to get rid of the gauges and the key switch here. These things just, they just kind of like screw in, twist out or whatever. This is the old style key. This uh, key switch here had four terminals on it. Uh, two of the terminals were for on and off. The other two terminals for uh, was for a headlight on and off. We're not gonna be using that. I got something else planned for that as well. So get rid of this old junk. Next thing we need to do is to remove this uh, state of charge meter here. Now on the back of it, as you can see, it looks like it has some wings up here. See the wings right there? Just if you have one of those, or if you plan on doing this, or you plan on removing this right here, just push those wings together and push down like so. It's starting to come out there. Not sure if you're on camera or not, but there we go. That's out. And you can uh, save this for later, use it for a different project, or just junk it. So now we have this portion right here all the way open. Now what I'm gonna be doing on this portion here, this right here is just a sticker. See that? So we're gonna be removing this sticker away from this piece of plastic here. I've got some ABS plastic, this is sheet plastic. I wanna say this is maybe an eighth of an inch thick, maybe, uh, yeah, I think probably about an eighth of an inch thick here. And I'm gonna be cutting this and putting it in place to mount the RXV style key switch. And I'll show you exactly how we're gonna do everything right now in just a second. So the RXV key switch, some people have asked, can you use this on other golf carts? Some people automatically, oh, you can only use this on EasyGo. Uh, that's a lie, okay? The first time I used this was on a 1989 Club Car DS resistor golf cart. It had the poverty lever, you know, the lever that you have to go from forward to reverse. And I hated those like levers on the series golf cart. So what I'd always do would be to remove the F and R switch from those golf carts, replace it with the SW182 or SW202 by Albright. So I was always envious of the guys who had like a club car a septic system where they had the F and R switch between the legs or even the easy go guys who had the uh, PDS uh, golf carts with the uh, switch on the dash. And I thought it'd be cool to have one of these. So I had one of these in that 89 uh, Club Card DS. So on the EasyGo RXV key switch, you have a four pin connector. See if you can see that good there, there's four pins in there. And you see what it's kind of uh, shaped like. Well, if you've been around a Chevrolet engine or some of the LTs or LS engines, then you might know about this four pin plug here. This four pin plug will plug directly into the back of this system like that right there. And it's one of those weather connectors. I couldn't tell you what they're called off the top of my head, but uh, it's got the weatherproofing here and the blue part there snaps right in place. Like so, pretty simple. All right, so we have the EasyGo RXV key switch here. We have our plug, 
plugged into the back of it, as you can see there. Now I have the first lead, which is this lead right here. I think going to a positive lead of the digital multimeter to show you guys exactly what the switch does in different positions here. So this one right here is going to the positive lead of the digital multimeter. We have the digital multimeter set to continuity. So once the system makes contact with each other, you hear an audible beep. Okay, with that being said, this first wire here, it's gonna be your voltage input wire on the key switch or on your golf cart. So if you have a 48 volt golf cart, it's actually listed A, B, C, D. The A wire, the A wire is gonna be your input. The B wire is going to be your own for the golf cart and your own for like your DC to DC uh, converter. Now let me show you exactly what I mean by that. We're going to take that lead here and hook it up to the digital multimeter. Once you put the key inside the switch here, you're going to get an audible beep on reverse, neutral, and forward. Reverse, neutral, and forward. This is the wire that's going to power your golf cart. It's also going to power your DC to DC converter for your accessories. So that is wire B. So right now I have the negative lead from the multimeter hooked up to the C position, which is the third slot here off the wiring harness here. It is going into the uh, key switch. Let's put a key in. I believe this is going to be our reverse Let's go ahead and check it out. There's reverse, nothing on neutral, nothing on forward. So the C position on the key switch is for your reverse wire. Now we're gonna set up the last wire here, which is going to be on the plug here. And that's gonna be position D. As you can see here, it's there. Let's put the key switch back in here. Obviously off is not gonna make an audible beep. Reverse does nothing. Neutral does nothing. And that is your forward position here. So that lets us know that D wire on the pin is gonna be the forward wire for your F and R switch. Now when you're using an RXV style key switch, if you plan to use one, it's not gonna go in the same small hole like the standard key switch did in one of these old ones here. This is your old key switch hole here. And it'll actually fit this hole right here if you have a uh, 72 volt cart, that hole's already in place. Now, now if you have to drill a hole, and I'm gonna be drilling a hole and putting a piece of plastic into this right here um, pocket here, you need to drill a two inch hole. So. Once you drill a two inch hole, take some sandpaper and make sure to clean all the burrs up around that hole here. Now, I have a cheap Hobo Freight um, micrometer or whatever this thing is called. I think it's a micrometer. And this lets us know right here, see we're at two inches, if you can see that. Okay, now once you put this in place, have to put it in at an angle. You see, make sure y'all see that. Take this key switch here, put it in at an angle, fits into place. You have two tabs on the back that will lock into place. Listen for them to click. And there it goes, it's installed. Now, on the RXV style key switches and the RXV style dashes, you have two extra notches. You have a notch on the very top up here and a notch at the very bottom. Let me show you what those notches are for. So if you look on the back of the key switch here, you have some locators right here. And they go almost up to the very top of the outside circle. So you have to be very careful if you plan on notching yours. What this right here does is it lets the key switch sit in a place and not turn left or right when you're turning your key switch. So this is the stock cubby pocket here. I and mean, we're gonna be using this. However, 
even though we could fit the key switch here, we have this opening here for the old key switch, and that's just too large for the uh, uh, headlight switches that I like to use. So we're gonna be cutting a piece of this ABS plastic and gluing it into place, drilling us a new hole for the switch. And once we have all of that done, we'll go ahead and in a later video, we'll drill another hole for a different headlight switch that I personally like to use in all of my golf carts. So with all that being said, we just need to get started. Now since this right here is a sticker overlay, I'm gonna go ahead and just give it some heat and try to pull that off nice and neatly. All right guys, so we have the stock pocket here and as you can see, I've removed majority of the glue from it as well. Now next thing we need to do is to measure this piece right here. Once we have it measured out, I'm gonna just cut some of this ABS plastic glue it in place. Now once we glue that ABS plastic in a place, I may tend to use this hole here for the RXV key switch and drill us new holes at the very top because I do believe that even though this big hole down here is down low that the RXV key switch will work there as well. So that's what we might do and give us some room at the top to mount other switches in this pocket here. I use the uh, the miter saw and I wasn't gonna show some things because I was being very careful but doing some things that wasn't supposed to be done. But I think I like this fitment better here. It's just a tad wide here, maybe an eighth of an inch too wide right here. However, I'm rolling with that. All right guys, so I have my piece right here. I uh, went up to the store and I grabbed some JB Wells, some plastic bonder. I'll put a link to this right here in the description below if you're looking for something similar to this by melt, uh, joining two different pieces of plastic together. Uh, marked which side. This is gonna be the inside here. This red up here is gonna be upwards. Um, I went ahead and tore off a little piece of some 80 grit sandpaper. I'm gonna scuff the back of this right here up. We're going to scuff right here up as well. And then we're gonna mix the plastic bonder the, together and apply it to both surfaces. This right here, uh, set time is 15 minutes. And you can, I think cure times around 30 minutes. So we need something nice and fast here. I would have liked to use some 2P10. However, I didn't have any left. So I had to go to the store and get some of that. The 2P10 is like a super glue with an activator. Um, two parts, 10 seconds is pretty much what it is. So only thing I'm doing here is really just to, to get the sheen off the back of it. I want to get it nice and uh, nice and sanded here so it'll uh, bite to this section here once we go to uh, put them together. All right, as you can tell, majority of the uh, shine is gone and it's got a bunch of fine scratches on there. So remember, this red is still going to be at the very top. Next, we need to go ahead and sand this portion here of the uh, thing as well. I'm going to do that too. Try not to sand anywhere else along this right here. All right, that looks a lot better and you can tell it's sanded also. So the plastic bonder here, um, part of the packaging here is the mixing tray as you can tell and you got this like popsicle stick here to mix the two parts in there. We're just going to mix enough and put it around the edges here and around these circles here and uh, set that in place. On these caps here, they just uh, twist off like so. And they're ready to go. You just need to... All right, red portion going towards the top. I have all the glue set in place there. We're gonna go ahead and put that into place. I'm gonna go ahead, while I got this in place, I'm gonna take something and try to wipe these edges right here real quick. I might go ahead and put a clamp here in place also. So we need to remove this little plate here. It's got two rivets in it. This holds our, our board and reverse switch right here. So the next thing you need to do is to disconnect 
the wires from your FNR switch and run them to the dash. All right, guys, so this is the first time I've experienced this uh, problem here, which it's all right, we're gonna fix it anyway. So the key switch on this Cushman, Easy Go Cushman, operates on 12 volts. Even though there's not a reducer on this golf cart, there must be a resistor in line the wiring harness somewhere. I've never seen a golf cart operate on a, a key switch operate on a different voltage than uh, the controller operates from the FNR switch. First time from myself, y'all have seen it, great. This is the first time I've seen it myself. So my key switch has 12 volts. My FNR switch, they need 72 volts. So in order to run this same key switch off of these 12 volt circuits here, we're gonna need to add two uh, 12 volt 30 amp relays. And what's that's gonna happen is, when we go to Ford, the Ford wire here is going to activate a relay and we need to uh, run a 72 volt line up here as well. And the relay is gonna jump 72 volts between pin 30 and pin 87, I do believe. And that's gonna send a signal back to the controller for forward and do the same thing for reverse. So we need one relay for forward, one relay for reverse. Both of them needs to be a 12 volt 30 amp um, relay. So I'll be sure to put a diagram uh, up on the screen once this video is done or right here and to show you exactly what I'm talking about here. So it's just a little bit more work. However, it's not like a plug and play like it has been in the past. And it may just be this one style of cart, but I'm pretty sure that the easy go key switches are all operating on 48 volts and the FNR switch is operating on 48 volts as well. So with that being said, I just need to add two more uh, relays to this and I'll put a diagram, like I said, I'll put a diagram up. I'm starting to ramble, I'm sorry, but we're gonna get this right here. We're not letting it skunk us. Okay guys, so if you can see this here, um, the plastic and the glue is already dried. That's what it looks like from the front there. So what I'm doing here, I took the pilot bit out of here. I'm gonna try to use the stock dash as a you know as a guide and just carefully cut it open from the back side there with no pilot bit hopefully this will work okay here we go the hole is cut let's see what the front looks like here we go not bad. So I'm thinking about still taking some of that sandpaper and try to knock down as much of the burrs as I can. So I'm gonna do that and then we're gonna go ahead and test fit the switch into the panel. All right, I went ahead and sanded down the hole some. Feels a lot better. Remember what we said, I don't, I don't know if I told you yet or not, but uh, it's got these notches here in the very top of the, uh, the switch there and you can notch the plastic out if you want to. Um, I'm really worried about just getting it in right now. There it is, the RXV key switch in the dash. I think that looks a lot better missing that, that hole right there. Um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and try to notch out the top one just a little bit, maybe the bottom one just a hair. You don't wanna go too much because you don't wanna go past uh, up in here where you can see it. So just be careful when you do it. So I gotta start with a jigsaw. And I, I didn't like the speed of the jigsaw. I found my file and just a little while later, we're able enough to make it fit and it's flush all the way around on here. I think it looks great. Um, it won't turn left or right. Okay, that's good to go. I like that, what do you think? I'll go ahead and Take this right here off the back. Exactly show you the upper notch that I made. I made the lower one as, as much as I could. I might have to go in there and uh, scale back some of, some of this right here on there, you know, just a little bit, but uh, it looks pretty good. I'm pleased. So we got our harness here for the RXV key switch. We're gonna go ahead and plug it in to the key switch itself. And 
in. If we had the screws at the moment to put in, we would pretty much be done here. So it's pretty much in place, or it is in place. All right guys, so the card is back together. Not all the way together. Didn't put the screws in here, didn't mount the relays just yet. We got some other things we may be mounting in the area back here. So I just left everything out. Nothing is permanently mounted, although everything is zip tied to the frame and in split loom. So you really can't see it, it's black on the black frame. So right now we're in the off position, as you can tell. If we put it into the reverse position, hit the accelerator, we'll go in reverse. Like so. We're in the neutral position, it won't go anywhere. We put it in the forward position, we'll be in forward and we hit the accelerator, we'll go forward. And that's exactly how we installed an RXV key switch into a Cushman hauler pro AC 72 volt whatever so when we were driving I usually lean my leg here and sometimes I would actually hit the FNR switch down here and it would either knock it out of forward into neutral or vice versa or knock it out of reverse into neutral so that's the reason I put everything on the dash here now uh, as you can tell uh, this was not just a plug-and-play job because for some reason we ran into the 12 volt on the switch I have never ran into that before and I believe that the most TXT's are 48 volt on the switch And if it is you don't have to add the relays like we did however adding the red two relays We just jumped 12 volt relays 12 volt 30 amp relays. We added the 72 volt uh power wire back here so we're controlling the relays from the 12 volt side of the switch but allowing the 72 volts to enter the controller to let it know we're in reverse neutral or forward so when you're looking for this plug here this is going to be for a general motors lt1 ls engine idle air control valve uh, this is the pin that you would use to plug into those I'll leave a link in the description below for the key switch and one of these plugs if you're interested in doing this modification to your golf cart. All right guys, with that being said, I appreciate you watching the video. I understand this is not gonna be a common uh, DIY or a common upgrade. Most people don't want a RXV style key switch or I would say most people don't. I didn't think anybody wanted wheel lights. And then you go to the beach a year later after you did a wheel light video and you see, you know, 9, 10, 11 wheel lights on golf carts. So it's kind of wild. So maybe we'll see this. Maybe we won't. You can do this right here in the club cars. You can do it in easy goes. You know, it's just voltage, guys. It's low voltage. So with that being said, I appreciate you watching the video. Sticking to the end. Until next time, guys, we'll see y'all later.